So we're not just ordinary people. Amen? Do you believe that? Amen. That you're not ordinary? Yes. It seems, it seems, it seems, it seems these people were getting me. <laughs> Do you believe that you're not ordinary? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Say to the next person beside you, say, you are, you are a, partaker a partaker of the divine nature. You have the very life of God in you. Hallelujah. You are Spring of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and God spoke and came to me. You know, the word of God, God gives us his word so we can use it in our situations. Hallelujah. That's how we change things as children of God. But hey, I don't want to carry. Let me just pray first. Father God, I just thank you today. I thank you, Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit of truth. You are my advocate and my intercessor and my standby and my strength this morning. I just pray that you will help me this morning to speak forth your word. Amen. That your word will stir the people up in their hearts this morning, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, I just give you praise. I just thank you that there's going to be a transformation this morning. I thank you that the people are not going to go back home the same way they came this morning. In the name of Jesus. I thank you that they will be fired up in their spirit, oh God. In the name, by the power of the Holy Spirit this morning. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Where do I start from now? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Are you blessed this morning? Amen. I'm going to be sharing this morning from Exodus chapter 23. Amen. Exodus chapter 23. Amen. Exodus chapter 23. It was a really, really long day yesterday. After coming from London in the evening. Oh, you know. <laughs> I just wanted to sleep last night. Amen. But we thank God that here the Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to read from Exodus 23 to um, verses 25. Amen. And it says, And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread. And thy water. Amen? Amen. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. This is the word of God here. Amen. It says, and it says, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread. Amen. Amen. There is everybody say there is benefit in serving God. There is benefit in serving God. This is his promise. Amen? It says, if you serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And this is an old covenant. Amen? This is an old covenant. Then in Isaiah chapter 53, amen, verses 4, it says, we're going to be looking at Bible this morning, amen? 53 verses 4 and 5. Hallelujah. Say after me, I cannot be sick. Sickness does not belong in this body. Because the Bible says, the word of God says, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Amen? You know, I didn't write the scriptures. It's God's word. Amen? And God's promises. Hallelujah. He says, surely he bore our grief. Who bore our griefs? Jesus Christ bore our griefs. Amen? Is anybody going through grief today? I want to tell you this morning that Jesus bore your griefs. So you don't have to go through those griefs anymore because Jesus bore your grief. Amen? Amen. And carried our sorrows. 
as a child of God, we shouldn't settle for sorrowful situations in our lives. When they come against us, we've got to rise up with the word of God and stand and say, no, I'm not allowing this sorrowful situation to dictate what happens in my present situation. Amen. 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 For as a child of God, it's important that we enforce what God says about us. As long as we keep allowing the situation to dictate our situation, our, our, our present circumstances, nothing will change. The child of God has to rise up. The child of God has to be bold and speak against situations that, is, that, that affects your work with God, that affects your peace. That affects your health. The child of God has to rise up and boldly declare and say no. Because the word of God says no. It says I am healed. It says he bore my griefs. He bore my sorrows. Amen. Therefore I shouldn't be going through this situation right now. Amen. It says yet. We did esteem him stricken, smitten, and afflicted. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgression. The devil will come and whisper to you and say to you, Hey, what you're going through is as a result of what you've done wrong. As a result of the sin that you've done, your parents and this and that and that. And bring all sorts of different things into your remembrance. No, but the Bible says... He was wounded for our transgression. God looked ahead of time. He looked ahead of time. When, in fact, when Jesus went on that cross, none of us here were on earth. So over 2,000 years ago, Jesus had you in mind when he was on that cross. So he took... He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. Amen. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Amen. You know, don't be saying, well, we're just, the Bible just means we're spiritually healed. Mm -mm. Spirit, soul, and body. Amen? Amen. It means that God has made us whole again. Amen. Once man fell, he lost everything in the Garden of Eden to Satan, and Jesus came and restored back that life that we lost. Amen? Amen. We understand that sickness, when God created man, there was nothing like sickness, there was nothing like sorrow, there was nothing like poverty, there was nothing like suicide or all them. No, there was nothing like that. It was until sin came into the world, death came. And Jesus Christ dealt with the issue of sin. Amen? When Jesus came, he dealt with the issue of sin. And because he's dealt with the issue of sin, now every child of God, everyone that comes to Jesus Christ, that accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, shouldn't go through that again. Amen? Amen. First Peter 2, let's go to First Peter chapter 2. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Amen. I'm excited. I am excited. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> oh, Jesus is Lord. You know, you know, going at those days where things bother me. I'm, I'm not really bothered about when the situation comes against me now because I know I have confidence in his word. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, he who glorifies, let him glorify in the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, you know, it's, it's, he who boasts, our boast is in who? The Lord. <laughs> so if I'm going to boast about a situation, I have to boast in the Lord. I have to boast in what he's done for me. He said it in his word. I, and as a child of God, all I have to do is I have to take God on his word. And we all have to take God at his word. 
What he says we are is who we are. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. First Peter 2 24 says, Who himself? Amen. Who himself bear our sin in his own body on the tree? That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. As far as God is concerned, it's past tense to God. Amen? We can see the sentence says, You were healed. So if you are going, if you have sickness in your body, the word of God is saying that you are healed. He's saying that you are healed. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of us know that the doctors, they actually walking towards the will of God. They give you tablet. They tell you about you getting well, taking your tablet. They're doing a great job. Amen. Well, all the doctors are doing a wonderful job. Amen. But when the situation does not line up with the word of God, you need to go back to the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're not saying you shouldn't go see your doctor. If the big doctor diagnoses you with something, okay, yes, doctor, I hear you. That's fine. But I'm going to go back to the word of God. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Let's look at some of the things, some of the promises that God um, gave us in his word. I want us to open our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4 and looking from verses 20. Amen. Are we there? Proverbs chapter 4. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. God is good. God is good. I am an offspring of God. Say, say that. I am an offspring of God. I am not this house. I am not this house. But I live in this house. And the life I have cannot be hurt by sickness or diseases. Because, because that, life that life is the God kind of life. Kind of life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's, that's who you are. Well, a lot of us, we sometimes identify ourselves based on the outward man. And that's why we can't even trust God for the basic things he's freely given to us. Amen? We have to see first for the word of God to work for you and I. We have to see first from where God sees. It's a different life now. Amen? Before we were saved, we look at things like a natural man. Amen? Okay, first of all, let's read Proverbs 20 and um, 4.20. It says, My son, attend unto my words, incline thy ear unto my saying, let them not depart from thine eyes. If the Bible is saying that, it says, incline thy ears unto my saying. It means press towards my word and make sure you're constantly listening to my word. Amen? Amen? It says, let them not depart from your eyes. You have to keep your eyes on it. So, do, when we go through situations, for example, or challenges in life, what's the Bible telling us here? It's saying we should focus on the word. Amen? Amen. It says, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of in thine heart. Keep the word of God in your heart. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. For they are what? Life. They are what? 
life unto those that find them and what? Health. Everybody say health. Yeah. To all their, their, their flesh. It's not talking about spirit. Did you just say spirit? It says flesh. It says it is health to your flesh. Amen. So, you know, the doctor will give you prescriptions and, um, and give you prescriptions and say, morning time, you take one tablet in the morning and one in the evening. Amen. Amen. Have you ever thought of actually following the same prescription with God's word? Amen. Like when you take, when you take what the doctor tells you to take, then you say, okay, I'll take the word of God too. And you say, okay, I've taken my normal prescription, and I'm going to take the word of God. This is what the word of God says. Then you take God's pill. God's pill. God's pill. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know the word health there, actually, if you look at the Greek, the Hebrew word, is the word mape, and it means medicine. It's saying the word of God is medicine to our bodies. Hallelujah. So, um, recently, um, after I, um, I think a couple of weeks, most about a couple of weeks ago, is it? A couple of weeks ago, um, I went to, went for a meal, came back home, my blood pressure was like so high. It was like 200 and something to 140 something. And my wife was like, oh, oh are we going to get the ambulance? Wait, we have to go get the ambulance, which is a good thing to do. But at that time, I was, I said, let me just sleep. And when I wake up, I should wake up. But I was not set. So I took my, my tablet and I went on YouTube and I looked for all the promises of God that talks about health. And I put that headphone in my ears. Amen. And I listened to the scriptures on and on and on and on and on and on. And I laid down there and I slept off. Because sometimes when you sleep, don't think your spirit is asleep. If you have a strong spirit, your, the strong spirit in you, if you have a strong spirit inside you, it dominates the outer man. And it is through the word of God... When you feed your inner man with the word of God, it strengthens your inner man. Amen. 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 And I laid down there, slept, and I got up in the morning, and I went to work. I checked my blood pressure again. It dropped to about 180 something. And then I said, and I kept on going to the toilet all the time. So I said, okay, as I was going to the said, just go get yourself a blood. Um, monitoring machine and check your blood sugar because my dad also had diabetes and sometimes you know people say because your father has got yeah. diabetes there's a tendency that you too might have diabetes but I don't believe in all that stuff because I'm a new creation in Christ yeah. Jesus amen? amen but yes let me tell you something but because God's word says that does not mean that the enemy will not try us yes. Yes. amen so this is where the child of God has to get up and enforce the promises of God and make sure that you're not getting stuff from, it says that which is born of the flesh is of the flesh and that which is born of the spirit is of the spirit. You don't allow the flesh to dominate your situation or to control your time here on earth. Your time here on earth has to be under the jurisdiction of God's word. Amen. And the word of God says, with long life, I will satisfy you. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, check my blood sugar. It was 30. Oh my goodness. And, you know, you know and, and, and my wife knew about it. So, they kept on looking at all the internet and what and what can happen. And a negative report was like, boom, boom. It was so strong that I was like shaking. I was like, and the enemy was like, no, you, you used to talk about the word. <laughs> you, you, you talk about the word. But, but, but look at you now. Look at you. Look at you. Okay. And that Sunday, Pops, when Bishop was preaching about 
Make sure you go to your doctor. He didn't, he didn't know what was going on. Make sure you go to your doctor. Make sure you go check. Let the doctor say what he needs, but you go back home and, and do the work. So I went to the doctor, and then the doctor looked at me, and the doctor looked at my doctor, she was like, um, I think you might need to go to the hospital. <laughs> Amen? So I went to the hospital, they looked at me, they passed two drips onto me, on the, on, on the, they, they just held me there. I had two drips in my, in me, you know, and then they gave me my prescriptions, and then I kept on using the prescription, and then my blood sugar kept on dropping and dropping. So one morning I was about to take it, and I looked at my blood sugar, it's like 7.7 .7 in the morning after breakfast. I said, okay, I'm not going to take this. I'm going to see what happens over the daytime. And I went to work. Um, but meanwhile, all the while, I was still confessing the word of God. Yeah, amen. 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 And when I got to work, I walked, got back in the um, I break to have my um, to have something to eat. Then I said, let me check it again. It was 4.7. It dropped so low, I was actually shaking. <laughs> amen. What am I saying? Look, the Word of God is dependable. Amen. The Word of God is medicine to your body. Amen? Amen? Look, you have to come to that place where you have to trust the Word of God. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But it don't come just like that. You have to spend time in the Word of God. You have to eat the word of God. You have to take the word of God constantly, taking the word of God, constantly taking the word. And I called the doctor, I said, doctor, this is what's going on. Whenever, and um, this, this is what has happened to me over this time, and my blood sugar is so low. The doctor says, I don't understand why your blood sugar has gone that really high, and all of a sudden it's gone so low. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna reduce your prescription, <laughs> amen? Already, I'm saying I'm gonna reverse this. <laughs> I'm already talking about it. I'm telling everybody. I said this, this one, it's gonna be reversed. I won't have to use that tablet no more. Amen. Amen. But I already know. So they reduced my prescription of this. Don't take that thing again. Just take this particular one, and we will see what happened again. Amen. Amen. This morning, after breakfast. Before coming here, I haven't used my tablet. It's 6.6 .6 after breakfast. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. By the time I get home now, it probably <laughs> because I've been dancing, I've been praising God, it will drop to another four points oh. again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But what am I saying? You're going to trust the word of God. Amen. Don't let the devil scream so loud in your face that you forget the word of God and start, and start getting scared. No. Amen. Let me tell you something. Do you know the life you have received? Let me ask that question. Do you know the life that you've received? Let's open our Bibles to 1 John chapter 3. You know in the Old Testament, we read things like Abraham begat Isaac. Isaac begat Jacob. And Jacob begat that and Methuselah, oh, you know, no, begat, begat. Do you know the only time when that stopped was when it came to Jesus' time? That was when that begat stopped. They talked about till Jesus Christ came. You see, when Jesus came, Jesus brought a different life than the begat, I, Abraham begat this. You know, then people were being recognized by their natural offspring. Amen? But when Jesus came, and the Bible says, when he was crucified, we were crucified with him. We all know that. Amen? And he was buried, right? And the Bible says we were buried with him. Amen? And the Bible says he rose. Amen? The Bible says when he rose again, he rose again unto a new life. Mm -hmm. It was not the life that Jesus, you know when Jesus died, 
He didn't rise up with the, with the same life that he died with. He, he rose up with a new life. Amen. Amen. That new life is the very divine nature of God. What does 1 John 3, 9 say? Can we all read it? <laughs> Amen. Okay, let's 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 read it. It says, "What whosoever, 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 it means whosoever is born of God. That includes me, you, and anybody that is born of God. Amen." He says, whosoever is born of God, do not commit sin. <laughs> Amen. You know, a lot of people have actually preached on this and they've actually said, ah, you know, you know that sister, because, or that brother, because he's born in what? Oh, no, he, because he's sin, he's not a child of God. That's not what the Bible is trying to bring out here. That's not what he's trying to say here. It doesn't habitually. Every one of us here, whenever we do anything wrong because we're born again, we're like, ah, Lord, forgive me. Mm. Do you know why? There's a seed in you. Mm. There's a seed in you. Amen? So he says here, Whosoever is born of God, do not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. Amen? Amen. And he cannot... <laughs> the Bible is saying you cannot... <laughs> He's saying the life that you have, that seed, he's talking about the seed. That means the very life that is implanted into your spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. He says, does not sin. Amen. Amen. My son, if he's not careful or if he's not born again, it might carry some natural tendencies of what I'm going through because it's in my flesh. Amen? And that's what it means. Offspring. Offspring like um, in, in the Bible, remember Abraham. Abraham went to a place and lied about his wife. Yes or no? Yeah. Did Isaac do the same thing too? Yeah. At the end? <laughs> like father, like son. <laughs> yeah? He went into another land and told Lyle that oh, this woman is not my wife. It's my sister. Abraham did the same thing too. Then Isaac too did the same thing too. Right? But this new life that we have, we have become an offspring of God. It's a life that has no corruption in it. Neither does it have sin in it. It's the life that has the energy and the life of both the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? It's the divine nature of God. We can see that in 2 Peter 1 3. It says, According as His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life. So, you see, when God bestowed that life in us, He gave us in that life everything that pertains to life and godliness. Amen? Amen? Through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue. He says, and he has given us his great uh, promises that by this, the promises that he has given, we might be a partaker of the divine nature, which means we are an associate of the God kind of life. It's like we are a new race of people. It's not the kind of people, the old natural man that ever existed before Christ. Amen? That's true. Amen? Not like the ones that were alive before Christ. Because the ones that were alive before Christ, there was something that was missing in them. They had a dead spirit. A spirit that was separate from God. But now that we are born again, that's why it says if a man is in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation, a different kind of people, a different set of people. Now these people have, 
In fact, when they go somewhere, God goes with them because they are there. <laughs> Amen? No wonder Paul, through his shadow, could actually heal the sick. He puts his hand on an handkerchief, he prays on it, and you take it to the sick, and you lay it on the sick, and the very life of God permits the soul into the body, to the handkerchief, and brings healing on one that is sick. That is the life that is inside us. You know, the life that can actually permit your body into your bloodstream and begin to make things happen and change things and make it correct. Amen. The way God has made it. <laughs> okay? Maybe, I don't know, am I making, am I making sense here? Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Amen? Okay. So it says here that the seed remain in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Mm. There's no sin in you. Paul said something. He says, it is not I who sin, but sin that is in the flesh. He didn't say in the spirit. Mm. Amen? Mm -hmm. So there's no sickness. There is no corruption. Mm -hmm. Neither is there depression in your spirit, man. Mm. But how do we let, you know, we have to let this life flow out of us. It has to come forth. Amen? That life has to come forth. The only person that can help us for that life to come forth is the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit of God is the very power of God. Amen. He's the one that causes us to live the life of God. Amen. You know why a lot of people struggle? They've not given the Holy Spirit a chance Amen. to help them. Try the Holy Spirit. Your Amen. life will change. Amen. <laughs> Your life will be transformed totally. Amen. 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 You want to you want to tell people about Jesus. Jesus said, He says. Stay away in Jerusalem. He says, don't go anywhere yet. He says, but when the Spirit of Truth, when the He says, when the Holy Spirit come upon you, He says, you shall receive power. Amen. You want to see God's power move in your life? You want to see things change in your life? Develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. You know, the other day again, I told my daughter again, she came to Jesus Christ. You can, I don't waste time. A lot of people say, let us wait a little bit so that they can grow a little bit before they receive the Holy Spirit. No! Once somebody comes to Christ, witness the Holy Spirit to them straight away. Because you're doing them no good when you leave them on their own like that. Mm -hmm. Because they will ever struggle. That's why you see some people that say, oh, I'm born again, but I don't know what's going on. I'm just I'm trying my best. I'm trying. No. When you receive the power of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says when the disciple received the power of the Holy Spirit, Peter, Peter that denied Jesus Christ three times, the Bible says he was bold and he began to preach the gospel. And the Bible says 3,000 people came to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. We want, in these last days, we've got to be acquainted with the Holy Spirit. We've got to develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit lives in you, but you have to cultivate a time. You have to find a time spending with Him. You have to deliberately, deliberately find time for the Holy Spirit. You know, you have to tell the Holy Spirit, look, I'm talking to you, I'm, like, I'm talking to you, the Holy Spirit, you know. I'm struggling right now. Um, I can't do this, you know, I keep thinking about this, the thoughts keep going through my mind. Uh, you know, I just don't know, man, each time I just can't live for you. I just find it really difficult. And God is saying, just say, Holy Spirit, right now, here I am. Amen. Amen. Help me. Amen. Help me, Holy Spirit, I need you. Just help me. 
You know, in the old, in the old, in the in the old covenant, the priests, I mean, the builders of the tabernacle, the people that actually created the high clothes of the priests, they had to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Exodus 31. Let's look at Exodus 31. <coughs> Let's open our Bibles. Exodus 31. Have I still got time? Yes. Have I got time? Yes. Yay! Yes. Hallelujah! Yes. <laughs> Amen! Yes. 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 I don't know. Am, am, I, am I making sense here, please? Amen? Yes. Yes. Am, am I connecting yes. with you guys? Yes. Amen? Yes. Am I connecting? Yes. Amen? Yes. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Exodus 31. Are we there? Yeah. It says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And what? I have filled him with the Spirit of God in what? Wisdom. wisdom. Amen? In what? Understanding. And in knowledge. And in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning stones, to work in gold and in silver, in brass, and in cutting up. It helps me feel you to cut stones. Amen? So, don't think the Holy Spirit is just there to help you to live the purpose of God for you. It also helps you with skillful things you need. If you need your business skills, if you need to be led to do certain things that God has called you to do and you need direction, you need to be led, amen, just ask Him. Amen. He'll tell you, put your money into that. Do that business. Where everybody is saying, mm, I'll never put my money in it. The Holy Spirit will tell you, put your money in it. Look at, let me give you an example of somebody in the back that did that. Isaac. There was a time that there was famine in Egypt. Was it? No. So there was a time when there was famine. Amen? And Isaac was about to go to Egypt. And God said to him, Yes, there is famine in this land. You know, most of the time when there's famine, somebody said, I'm moving. I'm migrating. I'm going to somewhere else. Amen? But in this situation, for Isaac, amen? Hallelujah. God told him, he says, no, you're going nowhere. You will sow in this land that there's family. And the Bible says, and Isaac sowed in that land. He had to hear the Holy Spirit. He had to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he sowed into that land. And the Bible says he prospered that even the Philistines envied him. Amen? Say after me, I am to be envied and not to be pitied in the name of Jesus. I'm walking in the purpose and in the plan of God for my life in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Shout hallelujah! Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus never left us comfortless. Mm -hmm. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He says, those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. So if you want to successfully live God's, God's purpose, you want to live God's plan, you want to be successful in your calling, depend on the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the life that we have received is the very nature and the life of God. Look at when God told, when God created Adam in his image. The Bible says that, God says, and have dominion. The life we have now, the life of God is supposed to have dominion. Look, God is not going to come down and do anything. He's waiting on me and you to do something <laughs> Amen. 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 You know why? Hallelujah. Because you have his life in you. He doesn't Amen. need to come down. You are here. Amen. The church is here. Amen. 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 People are sick in Catherine's house there. Eh? Mm -hmm. 
People are sick in the hospital. Doctors have tried all their researches. They can't find the solution for healing. And the church has this. And the church is not doing anything about it. But hey, that time is soon over. Amen. Because there's going to come a time. Amen. And it's coming very soon. Amen. Where the children of God will rise up. Because the Bible says the whole creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. Amen. The whole creation is waiting for the manifestation. Look, I am going to walk in the power of God. So, sickness is not going to dominate me. It's not going to dominate you. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, and Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. 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 Galatians 3. Christ, have you actually seen what the curse of the law is? Galatians 3, 13. Amen. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Let's look at it. I don't feel like stopping, you know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Galatians 3.13. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. Amen. Being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing, never say the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. So the life you have received is packaged with blessing. Amen? It's in your spirit. But it needs to come out. Amen? No wonder God wants us to literally die, not physical death. I mean, your personal desires that goes against the will of God and let his life shine forth through you. That life is in there, it's hiding in there, amen? But we need to, we need to bring it, it needs to come forth. It needs to. How many of us remember the mountain of transfiguration? Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus went on the mountain of transfiguration. But when God opened the eyes of the disciples to see, they saw the glory. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? They saw the glory of Jesus. Yes. Hey, look, you know, as you're hearing the word of God, your spirit is glowing right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> seeing something that you've not seen before, mm -hmm. your spirit is kind of like <laughs> it, just, <laughs> it just want to come forth. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's it. You're like, you, he wants to come forth. He's like, yeah, uh, uh, amen? He wants to come forth. So, when you spend time with the word of God, the Holy Spirit begins to polish that light is going to shine. He says, Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of God is risen up in you. Though the darkness shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise unto you and his glory shall be seen upon you. Amen? Amen. And he says, The Gentiles, people will see you and come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. You're rising in Jesus' name. Amen. The light that God has deposited in us is coming forth in Jesus' name. Amen. We're not going to die as people that have not fully fulfilled God's purpose. We're going to fully finish what God has called us to do. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Where was I before we... Yes. It says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. The opposite of curse is what? Blessing. Blessing. So if Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, you know, the curse, the curse is, 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 
is classified into three different areas. If we actually read Deuteronomy 28, 15 downwards, and you read those curses, amen? Ah, sometimes when I'm reading it, man, thank God that I have a revelation that Christ has redeemed me. Sometimes I don't want to read that place. You know, I'm so good at that. You know, no, no, no. <laughs> You know, I just said, no, 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 no. You know, sometimes when you, when you, when you, when you, can, you know, when, when I was a you know, the priest, sometimes you're like, oh, Lord, what are you saying today? And, you know, you open the scripture at random. Then you see, like, hey, you are going to be blessed. Yeah, you're the blessed. You're the this. You're like, yes, God spoke. Yes. <laughs> then you open it again. Then you see another one. It says, oh, arise and shine. For your light has come. You're like, yes, God spoke. Mm -hmm. Then you open it around. Then you open Deuteronomy 28, 50. You're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not this time. <laughs> Amen. Thank God that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. We have been redeemed. We have been delivered from the curses, Amen. from the power of darkness. The Bible says he has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of God's dear son. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And he says in Ephesians 1, 3, he says, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Amen. Amen. Yes. So the curse. You're waiting for that one, too. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's divided into three different sessions. The curse is poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. Amen. Poverty sickness and spiritual death. So when Jesus Christ said he was finished, he took all those on himself. First of all, he took sickness on himself. And the Bible says in um, 1 Corinthians 8-9, it says, Jesus became poor that we might become rich. Amen? Amen? And thirdly, the Bible says, when he went on that cross, he took our sin on that cross. That's our sin. Took him, got him to that cross. Took him to that. It was our sin that was laid on him on that cross. Amen? Amen. And anyone, the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. So he had to die. He had to die both spiritually and physically. And he had to go to where we were supposed to go because of our sin. Then God had to raise him up. <coughs> And he totally paid for it all. So a child of God, one that is born again, cannot be cursed. How can you curse God's life? Is it possible? No. Impossible. You can't curse God's life. It's impossible. That life can't be cursed. It says the wind blows where he listed. Nobody knows where it comes from or where it goes. He says, so is he that is born of the Spirit. That's why people can't understand you. Amen? People can't understand you. know, how, how did you do it? Say after me. Greater is he Greater is he that is in me that is in me than he than he that is in the world. That is in the world. I can do all things, I can do all all things. things. through Christ, through Christ. Who, strengthens who strengthens me. You know what I want you to do? Be God inwardly minded. Mm. Amen? Yeah. Be, I'll say it again. Be God inwardly minded because He lives in you. Amen. You know the Jews? The Jews, right? When they've got an idea, somebody was explaining to us yesterday in class, um, I remember James was in class, and um, they were saying something, that they were doing this um, in, in their school, or in the university, these two Jewish young guys, 16 years old, they were talking about the business they were about to start. And then they, they were Gentiles, obviously, like they used to look at them, they look at them like a Gentile, because he's a Hungarian and one of his friends, I don't know where he's from. And they both stood and they were 
they were they were talking about this business they were about to start, and they were thinking that will never work, man. It doesn't matter. And they went to meet this guy. What are you guys talking about? It just will never work. And those Jewish boys said, Really? What do you? Why do you say it won't work? Yes, it definitely will work. He said, You know why it's gonna work? It's because we're blessed. We're the children of Abraham. Amen. Amen. Natural people. They know this. Because God had promised in his word, whatever thing they lay their hands on, they will prosper. And whosoever bless them, bless them will be blessed. And who curse them will be cursed. We as children of God, we have the very life of God in us, and sometimes we even doubt the blessing of God. The Bible says, blessed is he who walketh not in the counsel of, un, in, of, un, of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law of the Lord does he meditate therein and there and now. And he shall be a tree. You are a tree. He shall be a tree planted by the rivers. And that bring forth his fruit in due season. And whatsoever he lays his hands on, he shall prosper. You will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. You're not prospering because I said it. It's because God said it. Yes. Amen? Amen. God said it. So when you're, if you're thinking that, oh, that business I want to do, am I going to succeed? Or, no, do we? Because it says whatsoever thing you lay your hands on, you will prosper. Amen. Amen. It's not in what you want to do. It's what what of you put your hands on. Yes. Put your hands on. Yes. And you will succeed. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? You're not an ordinary person. We are not an ordinary person. You know, when I saw this truth, I saw, I've got the seed of God. I kept on doing this. You know what I was into? I sat down on the word that's looking at it. You know, that's why it's good to meditate. Because I sat down, I was like, as I was doing that, I was thinking, I'm blowing into my bloodstreams right now. And I'm blowing every wrong stuff that is occupying my body and blowing all, all out in the name of Jesus. It cannot stay in this body because the Bible says in Romans 8, 8 11, in the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by the Holy Ghost that dwells in you. Amen. 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 So you have the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus up from the dead the same Holy Spirit that anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth who went about doing good, healing those who are oppressed by the devil, for God was it, is the same Holy Spirit that is in me and you. Amen. Amen. And we have to know this truth, amen. And knowing this truth alone is not enough. But knowing it and applying it. Yes. Amen. Amen. Knowing it and applying it. You could apply this truth. I'm going to stop in a bit. Amen. I'm almost done. Amen. Knowing this truth and applying it is important. Mm -hmm. You know, in the world they say knowledge is power. Yes. Knowledge is not power. You can have knowledge and not use it. But the application of knowledge is power. Amen. You can know this truth, but if you don't put it into practice, can, especially now that you're a child of God, you have to begin to follow God's principle for you to prosper. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because if you try and if you try the natural way to prosper, it's like throwing a fish on a dry land and telling it to survive. Because you don't belong there anymore. You are born a swimmer. You are born to succeed. You are born to succeed according to the principles of God. He's laid everything. He says, he says, He has given us these precious promises that by this we might be, we should be, we might be partakers of the divine nature. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Youth, young people, if you're born again, don't go back into the world. Look at a lot of people that have been born again that went back into the world. Look at their life. The reason why they have problem in their lives is because they are trying to live where they are not created. They, they try to survive in an environment where God has not ordained for them. God bless with me, Houston. Wonderful woman of them, a wonderful praise worshiper. 
Amen. I'm pretty sure she's born again. She's got the life of God in her. Being born again is a gift from God. It's not, it's not based on our actions. It's based on what Christ did. But once a child of God starts living according to the world, he will suffer like a mere man. The thing that destroys a natural man will destroy the same child of God. Whereas he has the power in him to overcome it. Amen? And what the enemy will do, he will shut, cut. God has ordained that person to actually live for a purpose. The enemy will make sure that that person does not live their purpose. And they lose their reward. So if you're a child of God, let us stick to God's principle. Because he says it in Proverbs 4, 20. Incline thy ears unto my saying. Amen? Amen. He says, for they are life to those who find them. The word of God is life for us. Amen? Amen. It doesn't matter how far, how much mistake you've done in the past. You can start again. Amen? Amen. You can start all over again. And God will hold you up and it will lead you in the right direction. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I will be blessed. Yes. I will be blessed. Yes. Just let's lift up our hands and just worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we just thank you. Lord, we give you all the glory. We bless you. We thank you for such a wonderful message you brought unto us today. Lord. May we walk in the power of this truth. For anyone in here that is sick, for anyone here that is going through a challenge, I stand here as one that carries authority in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus, that every sickness is going out of that body. I declare healing over you in the name of Jesus. Whatever the challenge is right now, I declare peace in the midst of the storm. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, today for how you blessed us. We thank you for the knowledge of the word you've given to us today. Lord, we're going to run with your word. We're going to apply this truth to our situation. In the name of Jesus. I want you to lay your hands on yourself and just say after me. In the name of Jesus, I am a success. I am not a failure. Sickness cannot dominate this body. Because I've got the life of God in me. The life of God is permeating my Spirit, soul, and body. I cannot be sick in my mind. And I cannot be sick in my body. In the name of Jesus. Now, body, respond to my word. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He gives strength to you.